this episode of Grassroots Garage, we introduce you to Paul, aka The Dentist, and he's one of one Phase 4 GTHO Falcon. His GDHO is just an absolute work of art, one of one car. There's a lot of rumours and there's a lot of stories. Uh, when I mentioned to a few mates that I was actually catching up with Paul, they went, oh yeah, I've heard this, and, and, and different mates said, oh, I have, I've heard this. So we're going to put a lot of those rumours to bed. We just love our cars and we just love sharing stories of cars. So I promised Paul that we're going to be cruisy community for him to, to, to share his cars with. I think the wider automotive community is really lucky to have Paul as the custodian of these vehicles. He just His passion for the cars, uh, his attention to detail is second to none. You can understand why Paul locked the cars away. One of the first times he took them out, someone tried to steal the compliance plate off the vehicle. Some of the damage. Uh, you can see the back. Oh, goodness me. If you look at the back, yeah, yeah, I can see, see it. I can out. see it. Yeah. So it was ripped off yeah. there. Oh. And, the, and he was lying underneath. And they were going to drop the compliance plate down. So it would have been stolen. So we really appreciate Paul's time and, and we're really excited to be bringing these cars to you. Part one of this series is Paul catching up with some mates in Bathurst as he takes the Jetty HO to the GT Nationals in Bathurst, a freezing cold day, but uh, just a great crew. We took two of Paul's cars out there. You might recognize some of these faces for some previous episodes. Part two of the series will be Paul back at home, having a bit of a chat of the history of the car. And then from there, we'll just go on with conversations with Paul, people that have been involved in the cars, and anything that comes up in the comments section, questions, rumours, things that have been said about the cars over the years, questions about the authenticity, which I think we should cover off anyway, but anything that comes up, we'll talk about it. Hope you enjoy this really special series, and again, thanks to Paul for giving up his time and letting us really tell the story of these amazing cars and the man behind them. Welcome back. Ford fanatics are descending on Mount Panorama and Bathurst, putting their pride and joy on display. The GT Falcon Nationals hosting their show and shine event, giving punters a chance to experience history. Winding back the clock, where it all began for the Ford GT Falcon. Cars from all over Australia parked up and popped their bonnets all in the name of history. Ranging from the first ever GT Falcon in 1967, right through to the last ever model made in 2014. The Show and Shine event boasted 427 cars, one of them a sight some thought they'd never see. Here this weekend, one of the biggest attractions is the Phase 4 from 1972. This vehicle is the only compliance plated Phase 4 and it's only the fourth time it's been seen in public. Denied by a lot of people that it existed, but as you can see, it's still, it's still alive. Since then, the Phase 4 has had a bit of a paint job. Other than that, it remains as original as ever. Keeping it company on display was a 1971 GTHO Falcon with only 52,000 miles on it. This heralded the end of the standard cars that could race in Bathurst. Um, they changed to the improved production. So these were the last of the cars that you could buy off the showroom uh, and they made only so many cars that were available to the public. That's what's special about it. What a way to celebrate the 19th GT Falcon Nationals. A better event you couldn't have than a spiritual home. Macrate Snare, 7 News.
My name is Paul Tobin. Uh, I'm here today at Bathurst at the 19th Nationals with uh, Dean Hampton from Perth and Andrew Stemp. Andrew and Dean have been instrumental in getting these cars where they are today without Dean's help uh, in sourcing out appropriate parts and giving us the know-how. Um, stayed at Paul's place a few times and we sort of just went through, through the cars a little bit and just a bit of guidance on little things we could do. They are where they are now, yeah. And I actually met Andrew um, through Paul, did a bit of work at his workshop uh, one weekend and had a good, <laughs> had a ball, <laughs> all the boys. And yeah, it was. <laughs> it was good. It was really good. Yep. Rightio. I'm Andrew Stamp from Pen Penner Steering Service. I'm um, good friends with Paul and he's trusted me to do a lot of the mechanical work in the car. We've done the suspension, we've done the engine stuff, we've done We've done just general mechanical repairs and, and maintenance and and um, anything to do with anything the to do with the car basically. We, well, I've done not just on these two, but he trusts me with all of them. So very privileged. And uh, Dean's helped out, telling me I'm, we're no restorers, and I couldn't tell you what what bolt goes where and what particular colour that should be. But all that, all those uh, little oh, things. Oh, Dean's uh, Dean's a man, and he was uh, good enough to give me a list of things that had to be done. And I was a man that had to follow his list tick them all off and, and got it right. Dean's business in uh, Perth is restoring people's obsessions and uh, that's quite a common thing that I've spoken in the GT circles. There's no better authority than Dean and his cars have uh, topped the, the, the list in the, the Bassett's Nationals numerous times and he's here as a head judge uh, uh, again and uh, everyone appreciates his in-depth knowledge and his humble way and he's here to help and he's, he's, he's got the, he, the reasons he likes the cars are similar to my own and uh, that, that's I think where we gel. We're, we're not in it to make money but the, the aim is to try and enjoy them and bring them to the public and let the public enjoy them and that's what today's about it's not just the cars for me it's these people in particular uh, the personalities that have made this all day possible for me so i can't speak highly enough of these two gents all right so we'll talk about this picture first tell me about that that picture is in uh, bob la hood's yard yep and that was the condition and the state I bought the car with Bob LaHood. He came down to the, that yard and he showed me the car, which wasn't on display. It was in at the back of the uh, dealership, but in a room. And um, that's that's the state it was with the silver uh, blackouts. They painted those uh, over the black. The interior of the trim was as untouched to this day, uh, obviously being clean, but it's never been refurbished. It's, it's the way it was, as you see there. Yeah. Um, it's different dimensions, obviously, but it's... Um, very hard to get. We've had it refurbished. There was some dispute whether it should have it. Was going to have a carpet mat, but it never eventuated with that. So this, this is not the fit's not so great. So, but that, that, that fit is not so great from back. To That's true. That's, yeah. They're just, they're that in Even on you can see on this one here, it's, a, it, it's still not a great. Um, different tanks. Yes. There's something about these, is, it, so is that an original tyre? Yes, it's been, I didn't realise it was in that state though, to be honest. Um, just discoloured over time. That time, yeah. So how has it survived? Oh, this is, the, the, not, this is since I've had it, the car. I've got tyres that you can see were more original. The, what, the, these came, these wheels came when they released the Phase 4. These wheels were intended for the 200 uh, Phase 4s. Got ya. Because when it didn't happen, they gave them to the owners of Phase 3s uh, to homologate them for the 1972 race. So for the 71 race, these were the original wheels. Yes. That came with this car. Like the five slot wheels, as you can see, they were hardly used. Still got the factory dub, paint marks, and all that sort of. So that's what's with the pink paint on it. That's From the factory, that's where that's the way they were. You don't see that because a lot of them are used. This is this had done so few miles, they were comparatively new. And that's th these tyres were on the car. But everyone thinks red walls, but red walls weren't like you, it was an option from the factory. No one had them, everyone's got them now, but uh, in the day, no one really cared about them. Yeah, yeah. I love that. That's awesome. It's all the little, the, the little features, isn't it? Yeah. Who oh, that's What's that thing in the case there? Uh, Jack. Jack, oh, okay. Factory Jack? That's, yeah. yeah.
Absolutely fantastic. So you're saying they, they, these Goodies are because Jack Brabham had the, yes, the contract for Goodies. <laughs> So that's it for part one of this series. Once again, thanks so much to Paul for his time. In part two, we'll go back into the history of this very special car, how it actually snuck out of Ford in the first place, how it ended up at Jack Brabham Ford. Uh, we have a look at a couple of the previous owners and then how Paul got his hands on it. I hope you've enjoyed this episode and uh, if you have, please leave a comment so we can address any questions or comments that come up.